Okay, in this uh, section we're going to uh, introduce the central idea for the whole course here, finding the area under a curve in general. Uh, let's suppose we, here's a specific example. Suppose we have y equals x squared and want to find this area s, the area under this curve from 0 to 1. This is how we're going to do it. First of all, we're going to approximate it by uh, looking at the areas, the sum of the areas of these rectangles, okay? Now, let's suppose we want to approximate that area S with four rectangles by dividing up the interval from 0 to 1 into four subintervals. If you do that, then if you have, then each subinterval is going to have width one fourth. The way you compute that is uh, the width of the subinterval is always B, the endpoint, the right endpoint, minus A, the left endpoint, divided by the number of subintervals. So in this case, delta X is one fourth. Now we're going to use the right endpoint of each subinterval to compute the height of the of each rectangle. Um, it's actually easier that way, but you can use the left endpoint as well. If you use the right endpoint, then the first subinterval we're going to plug in one fourth into x squared, and, and this height here would be f of one fourth, which would be one fourth squared, and so on. The the right endpoint of the second subinterval would be one half or two fourths, and so on. So then, what in our the way you the way you find the area of each rectangle is, is you, you take f of the right endpoint times the width. That's what I was mentioning before. So this is the area of the first rectangle plus this is the area of the second rectangle and so on. You could write it like this, couldn't you? i equals 1 to 4 of f of x sub i times delta x. Now in this specific example, since x, since x1 is 1 fourth, you get 1 fourth squared times 1 fourth. This expression represents the area of the first rectangle Similarly, this expression represents the area of the second rectangle and so on. So, so that could be written in general you, in our summation notation, or sigma notation, i equals 1 to 4 of i over 4 squared times 1 fourth. Anyway, if you were to compute that, you get 0 0.46875. Now again, this is called r sub 4. If you use, if you use the left endpoint of each subinterval instead of the right, we would call that l sub 4. So x sub 1 would be 0, x sub 2 would be 1 fourth, and so on. And your answer would be a little bit different, wouldn't it? Let's continue. Let's refine our estimate now. Instead of using four subintervals, let's use eight. And we're going to continue to use the right endpoint, okay? So if you're going to use eight subintervals, then each subinterval is going to have with b minus a over n still, 1 minus 0 over 8 becomes 1 eighth. Makes sense. And if you're going to use the right endpoint of each subinterval, the right endpoint of the first interval is 1 eighth, the right endpoint of the second interval is 2 eighths. Again, these are the numbers that we're going to plug into the function to get the height of the rectangle. All right, so the first rectangle is going to have area, the, the height is going to be f of x1, and the width is going to be delta x. The area of the second rectangle, the height is going to be f of x2. And, and, the, and the width is going to be delta x, so this is the area of the second rectangle, and so on. You could write this in sigma notation also. The sum of the areas would become the sum i equals 1 to 8 of f of x sub i times delta x. And in this specific example, it's a little bit messy. Let's see. The, sum of the, the first rectangle, remember, it's going to have area 1 eighth squared times 1 eighth, height times width. The second rectangle is going to have area 2 eighths squared times 1 eighth and so on. That could be written as the sum i equals 1 to 8 of i over 8 squared times 1 eighth. Anyway, if you were to add those up, you would get um, 0 0.398. Are you surprised that, um, that that sum is actually quite a bit less than the first one? Uh, the reason is because if you look at the, when you only had four rectangles, see all this error here? a lot more of this error here than there is here. So you would think it would be less. Anyway, this chart really says a lot. As you increase the number of rectangles with right rectangles, notice how the sum of the areas becomes less. In fact, it looks like it's getting close to one-third, doesn't it, as n gets large? Now, if we were to use left rectangles instead of right, we'll do some of that in the next video. Uh, notice your area, your area, some of your areas is going to be less, but notice it's still approaching one-third. That's inter interesting. Let's do one more thing here. We're almost ready to define the area in general. This, this is where it gets a little messy. Let's approximate 
the area under um, y equals x squared from 0 to 1 using n rectangles. Okay? Now, um, delta x, the width of each rectangle, becomes 1 minus 0 over n. We just leave it as 1 over n. Just leave it as 1 over n. And then, so if we're going to use the right um, endpoint to compute the height of each rectangle, then for the first rectangle, the right endpoint would be 1 over n. For the second rectangle, uh, the height would be 1 over n squared, actually. And so for the second rectangle, the height would be 2 over n squared, and so on. For the ith rectangle, the typical one, the right end point of that subinterval is going to be i over n, so the height is going to be i over n squared, and so on. So like I was saying, the first rectangle is going to have area f of x1 delta x. The second rectangle is going to have f area f of x2 times delta x. The typical rectangle, the ith rectangle, is going to have area f of x sub i times delta x, which could be written like this. <coughs> the sum i equals 1 to n of f of x of i delta x. Now in this particular example, like we were saying, the first rectangle, the right end point is 1 over n, so it's going to have um, area 1 over n squared times 1 over n. The second rectangle has right end point 2 over n, so the area of the second rectangle is going to be 2 over n squared times 1 over n. The typical ith rectangle, since the right end point is i over n, you get i over n quantity squared times 1 over n. And the last one's going to, right end point's going to be 1, so it's 1 squared times 1 over n. So, so, so the sum of the areas of the rectangles can be written like this. Uh, i equals 1 to n of i over n squared times 1 over n. Now we, we, can, we can simplify this from what we talked about last time, properties of sigma no, notation and summations. You could multiply the top out, you get i squared, the bottom you get n cubed. Now you remember you could, you could take the n cubed out, because it, it's really a constant as far as i is concerned, it's a constant. And then remember that fancy formula for the sum of i equals 1 to n of the i squares? That's one of those formulas that's kind of important. Anyway, so if you were to simplify this last expression, we, we've written the sum of the areas of all the rectangles of n rectangles in terms of n. This is really important because we're, we're ready to um, define the area under the curve now. <coughs> Excuse me. The area under the curve not too surprising, I think. It's the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum of the areas of all the rectangles. We're using right rec rectangles. Turns out it doesn't make any difference if you use right or left. It's easier if you use right rectangles. That's the only reason why we're doing it. Alright, so, so r sub n, like, like we were saying before, is this. Now this picture is kind of nice. It shows you that in general if you have a function and you have the um, n rect rectangles, the i-th rectangle uh, the width is, um, this would be the typical rectangle from uh, x sub i minus 1 to x, x sub i. So this is a nice little graph. But anyway, how would you answer the question? How would you answer the question now? How would you find the exact area under the curve of f of x equals x squared from 0 to 1? Well, it's the limit as n goes to infinity of r sub n. So what, what is the limit as n goes to infinity of this exp expression? Do you see that this, this ex, as, as n goes to infinity, this expression has indeterminate form infinity over infinity, right? So you can actually apply L'Hopital's rule and say that the limit as n goes to infinity of r sub n by taking the derivative of the top over the derivative of the bottom. This is going to be equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of 6n squared plus 6n over 18n squared. Now, what, is this, what form does this limit have? This limit also has indeterminate form infinity over infinity. So you could apply L'Hopital's rule one more time. And so it's the limit as n goes to infinity of 12n plus 6 over 36n. As n goes to infinity, this has a determinate form infinity over infinity. So we can apply L'Hopital's rule yet a third time. And then this becomes the limit as n goes to infinity of 12 over 36, which is one third, which is what the chart seemed to indicate, right? So we've th this is how we're going to do it. We're going to we're going to um, find an expression for r sub n, uh, the sum of the areas of the rectangles in terms of n. That, that's the hard part. Then we're going to take the limit as n, as n goes to infinity and call that the area under the curve. Pretty nice, huh? Um, we're going to be doing that a lot. So if you had trouble following this, don't worry. We're going to be doing it a lot next couple of days. All right, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.